When we discuss dog bites, the first thing we think of is letter carriers being bitten by hostile dogs. In 1995, 2,851 letter carriers were among the estimated 4.7 million Americans who were bitten by dogs. For every letter carrier bitten by a dog, an estimated 900 children are victimized by the senseless pain and suffering of dog attacks. The sad part of these statistics is that the fault does not necessarily lie with the dogs, but with their owners. Dog bites result in approximately 44,000 facial injuries in hospitals in the United States alone. Male patients slightly outnumber females in most studies. Severe injuries occur almost exclusively in children less than 10 years of age. The face is the most frequent target, but the primary exception is male carriers, where 97% of their injuries involve the lower extremities. The vast majority of dog bites are by pet dogs and occur when people are engaged in socially acceptable behavior in appropriate places. 61% of injuries occur close to the dog's home or the home of the bitten person. Typically, 77% of injuries are by friendly dogs known to the bitten person. When broadly defining provocation, almost half of all injuries are provoked. Puppies are more likely to injure than an adult dog. There are hundreds of reasons for keeping dangerous animals. Aggressive guard dogs are trained for self-protection. Whatever the reasons, the potential for serious injury exists. Dog bites can be very serious, but the patient must always guard against the dangers of infection, tetanus, and possibly rabies. Repair of the wounds may require simple closure, removal of injured tissue, and reconstructive surgery. Underlying nerve and bone injuries may need repair. Scars are inevitable. Dog bites can cause pain and may require hospitalization. Some breeds of dogs have a genetic predisposition towards aggressiveness. In the United States, the most commonly reported dog breeds involved were pit bulls, causing 24 deaths. Rottweilers caused 16 deaths, and German Shepherds were the cause of 10 deaths. Overall, there is less tendency to bite when there is early socialization to people, training, quality of care, supervision, and in general, taking proper care of your dog. Factors that may increase the tendency to bite include treatment of the dog, behavior of the victim, and possibly the weather. There are also dangerous situations, such as invading a dog's territory, threat to a dog's family, threat to the dog, and of course, jealousy of the dog. Let's illustrate the point. Here is a small toy Doberman who is friendly when introduced to strangers. He won't bite and becomes friendly immediately after he's checked out the individual. However, if that same person steps inside his territory or space, then he's not so nice. He is guarding his domain. The owner of this little dog also will not come near the dog's food when he's eating. That's just the way this dog operates. He guards his space and no one fools with his food. There are behaviors that humans find totally natural, but to dogs, this behavior can be very threatening, such as approaching or bending down over dogs, especially if they are lying down quietly, approaching them immediately when you enter their territory, teasing or waking them, playing with them till they become overexcited. There are a number of behaviors that can trigger an attack. First, let's take a look at some don'ts around dogs. Don't hold your face close to any dog. Don't allow dogs to roam unleashed. Don't pet strange dogs. Don't tease a dog. Don't startle a dog. Don't touch a sleeping dog. Don't leave a small child alone with any dog. Don't fail to vaccinate your dog. Don't leave a dog alone with strangers. Don't ignore the warning signals of aggressive behavior. Let's take a quick look at some dog bite prevention techniques aimed at the dog owner. Don't assume your dog won't bite. Spay or neuter your dog, as unneutered dogs are three times more likely to bite. Obedience training can teach your dog proper behavior and help you control your pet in any situation. 
When your letter carrier comes to your home, keep your dog inside and away from the door, in another room, or on a leash. Don't let your child take mail from the letter carrier in the presence of your dog, as the dog's instinct is to protect the family. To help avoid dog bites, don't approach a strange dog, especially one that is tied or confined. If you attempt to pet a dog, always allow him to see and sniff you. That's how a dog becomes familiar with you. Don't run past a dog. The dog's natural instinct is to chase and catch prey. If a dog threatens you, don't scream. Avoid direct eye contact with the dog, but don't lose sight of him either. Look over the dog's head. The reason for not staring at the eyes of a dog is that's what they do when they are getting ready to challenge or fight another dog. Staring into the eyes of a dog is dog language for, let's fight. If you're threatened, try to remain motionless until the dog leaves. Don't scream or run. If the dog comes up to sniff you, allow it to do that. In most cases, the dog will go away when it decides you aren't a threat. If you say anything, speak calmly and firmly. Try to stay very still until the dog leaves, then back away slowly until the dog is out of sight. If a dog does attack, feed it anything you have, such as a jacket, a purse, bicycle, anything that may distract it and give it something to bite other than you. If you fall or are knocked down, curl into a ball with your hands over your head and neck. Try not to scream or roll around. Generally, if you don't fight back, the dog will become discouraged and go away. What happens if you do get bit? First aid for dog bites includes washing the area with an antibacterial soap. Apply a sterile bandage and elevate the wound if possible. Seek medical attention. Be sure to report the dog bite to police. The reason for this is to find the dog so it can be observed in addition to finding the dog's owner to learn of the dog's medical or behavior history. Keep in mind that bites from a dog infected with rabies can transmit this to the victim. Realistically, rabies from dog bites is rare. However, it is vital to find the dog and allow animal control and medical personnel to make the determination if you are in danger of rabies or other diseases or viruses. How do you know if a dog is going to bite you? It's a good question and no one has the answer, but there are some very good indicators you should learn. As we stated earlier, never lean over a dog you suspect of being aggressive. The dog may bite you out of fear, anxiety, or stress. A dog that's jumping up and down, wagging its tail and barking, may not actually be expressing aggression, but rather excitement. On the other hand, if the dog's body becomes stiff and rigid, and he stands very still, it's quite possible the dog is ready to bite you. It's a good idea to watch the dog's mouth. When the dog pulls his mouth slightly shut, he's telling you he's going to bite. So slowly move away. Quite often a dog about to bite will growl, snarl, snap at you, or may be staring straight ahead, may have bared teeth or curled lips, or the hair may be standing on end. If the dog's ears are erect, the body stiff or tense, and the tail is still moving rapidly, the dog is in an aggressive posture and may attack. If the dog is afraid, with ears back, body crouched, with the head down, and the tail hanging down or tucked between the legs, he may attack as well. Don't run, don't panic, but get away from the dog. If a dog chases you, stand facing the dog and hold very still. That's not to say the dog won't bite, but if you run away, it's almost guaranteed. The best advice is to avoid strange dogs as much as possible, as you can't be sure of their behavior. There's a lot more to learn about dog bite prevention, but these few tips will help you reduce your exposure. Don't put yourself in the position of having to run away from getting bitten, as most dogs can outrun humans by a wide margin. Knowledge about dogs, dog behavior, and dog habits will go a long way in reducing the exposure. Thank you. Okay, the first thing uh, you typically look at if you want to see if a dog's aggressive, and the most important thing is the expression in the eyes. Just like when we look at people, we know if they're serious or not, or how intense or angry they are. Dogs show the same emotional qualities in their expressions. 
Some people say, look at the tail, and if it's wagging, he's friendly. That's a mistake, because dogs that like to bite or dogs that have been trained to bite will typically wag their tail before they have a chance to take a chunk out of you. Because biting you is the way that they reward the dog during that training. They frustrate the dog constantly, and then at the end, to release it and give the dog some kind of reward, they allow him to bite the sleeve or the uh, padded arm cover that the agitator is wearing. Another thing to look at is the dog's haunches, which is about the hair on his shoulders. If they're aggressive or feeling defensive, a normal reaction in most mammals is to try and enlarge yourself. Grizzly bears will often stand up, although they really don't have to when they're nine feet tall, but uh, it's a common thing to do. And for a dog, the hair on the back of their necks will go up, which is meant to make them appear larger and more scary. So this is always a sign that the dog feels threatened and an aggressive response is uh, coming on. Other things to look for are, are the lifting of the head high, the ears being very erect, stiffening of the musculature, and a direct stare. Direct staring is a very intimidating thing in the animal world, and it's something that a dog does when he's very serious. If a dog is looking at you, his tail is wagging, he's growling, but he's looking away like this, He's probably not thinking about attacking unless you get closer. So behaviors not to do when you encounter a dog that might or might not be aggressive. First thing is don't turn and run. Running is uh, reminiscent of prey running away, and dogs are descendants of predators. And for lots of dogs, seeing you turn and run will actually turn on what's called a predatory response or a predatory sequence of behavior in which they will chase you and attempt to bite you. It also tells the dog that you're more frightened than they are, and when you act frightened, the dog will feel more confident in being aggressive with you. Another thing not to do is scream in a high voice. If you were to something go, ah! Well, again, that high voice is a lack of intensity and a lack of aggression on your part, which will build up the dog's confidence. And they also respond like with prey running away, crying or screaming, uh, and feeling that possibly uh, you are someone to be attacked. If you're faced with an aggressive dog, always remember that the dog is aggressive because they feel threatened. All aggression is based on fear. If you weren't in some way threatening that dog, they would have no need to defend themselves or to act aggressive towards you. So the first thing you want to do is stop staring at the dog if you are. If you're going to see the dog's expression, as I suggested earlier, it's a good idea. Look at the dog, get a sense, and then turn away. Because for many dogs, just a direct stare is enough of a threat to them for them to have to act on it. The next thing is to stand still. As I said, any movement away from the dog will, will give them more confidence in attacking you. And especially if you turn your back, that will give them even more confidence. So you want to stand your ground and not stare at the dog, but actually just don't move at all. Don't say anything. Don't move at all. If you have a dog that you feel confident with, because you're looking at this dog and the dog seems conflicted, their head's turned around, their tail is kind of wagging, so they're kind of conflicted about what they're going to do. Sometimes you can just give a very strong yell like, hey, like that, as strong and as guttural as you can. And if you can make that sound with real confidence, you'll turn off most dogs. But if this is a serious dog or one that's been trained to bite or attack, they'll take that as an opportunity to take a chunk out of you. They're looking for any reason to bite you. So only do that if you feel really confident. Another thing to do with a confident dog is to turn your body, if you can, so you're facing from the side. The bigger you look to this dog, the more threatened he will be, the more he will feel that he needs to attack you. So if you turn to the side and you are showing less of yourself, you're actually turning down the threat, and the intensity should diminish. If, in fact, this dog decides that he's going to bite you and there's nothing you're going to do about it, to get down into a crouch, cover your head with your hands so that your face and vulnerable parts are not available except for sniffing. And this way the dog, even if he attacks you, is not going to hit a vulnerable area. You always want to cover your face, get your hands out of the way if you can. Uh, if a dog is coming at you directly, they told us in the service, always give them the arm you're not going to use as much as the other one. So if you have to, if you're in that situation, you're certainly, if you're right-handed, not going to give him your right arm. If he jumps at you, put your left arm out. It's better than nothing. 
If you have a jacket or any kind of uh, clothing that you can wrap around your arm, if you have that opportunity, that's a good thing to do too because when the dog bites you, it's just going to give you some added protection. There's a lot of talk in the media these days about so-called aggressive breeds like Rottweilers, uh, Chow Chows, Akitas, and especially Pit Bulls. Aggressive breeds are dogs that are bred to do specific tasks that include protection or fighting, such as herding dogs which protect the flock like Rottweilers and German Shepherds from predators and poachers, dogs that fight in the pits such as uh, Pit Bull Terriers, Sharpays, and Chow Chows which used to fight in uh, China. Then we have hunting dogs such as Rhodesian Ridgebacks which hunt lions or Akitas which hunt bear. And of course we have dogs that are meant for protection of cattle, etc. All these breeds need to be very aggressive in order to do their job, but it doesn't mean that they're unstable or definitely a threat to you. So it would be unreasonable just to see a Rottweiler and get scared and react because you will probably bring a problem onto yourself. Always judge a dog by their individual nature, the way they specifically act when you encounter them. If you see someone walking a Rottweiler towards you and the dog is walking beautifully at their side in the hill position and the owner appears to be fully in charge, you're probably fine. However, if the dog is dragging them down the street or they're looking in the other direction and not knowing what's going on, then it's best to cross the street and avoid that dog. If you're in a profession where you visit people's homes where dogs that might bite you are around, some really important things are, one, find out before you go to that home whether or not a dog is on the premises. Usually, uh, if you were a postal worker or a meter reader, they will have that on the form or even on your computer. Also, know what kind of breed is there, so when you hear the barking, you kind of know the size of the dog and who you're dealing with. Always look for signs that say, dog on duty, beware of dog, and especially signs that say, beware of dog, that have a giant uh, Rottweiler face with teeth and fangs hanging out. That says something about the owner's intention. They want to let you know that there's a dangerous dog behind there. Sometimes it just says, beware of dog, and there's nothing, and that could be a little you know, miniature schnauzer, and they're just trying to keep thieves away. So always pay attention to that. Also, never go through a door, portal, entranceway, gate, etc., unless the owner is with you. Uh, dogs see anybody, if a dog sees anyone strange on their territory, their natural reaction, and the reaction they should have, is to challenge them and check them out. And some dogs challenge you by taking a chunk out of your leg. So don't put yourself in that position. That would be considered trespassing, possibly. And if you went to legal, uh, to a legal case, you would be uh, brought upon with comparative negligence, which is really provocation on your part. Uh, another thing to do is, if you are afraid of dogs, and know you're afraid of dogs, when you visit a home, ask the owner to put the dog somewhere where you will not have to worry about it. Dogs sense fear. They can smell it by the salt and the sweat on your hands, what's called the galvanic skin response. You can't help it. They can smell those chemicals, and if they know you're afraid, they'll be much more confident and try to intimidate you often, forcing you to do something stupid which may lead to a bite or some serious injury on your part.